guys, and welcome to the Friday Live thing with me, Mark Thompson, and Tim, the treadmill builder. Good one. <laughs> How's that? On the fly, mate. On the fly. Right. So welcome, everybody. I'm not, I'm not even going to go anywhere close to ex trying to explain what that's all about. Just let people wonder why I've called you the treadmill builder. So today, there's, there's probably one person on the call who does know. He might be on the call. Who knows? Exactly. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm at home today because it is so goddamn wet. We've got roughly about two a month or two months worth of rain in two days. So hey, but then again, it's going to be fine for another 362 days. Yep. Who cares? So yeah, um, to this week we're talking about actually I want to talk about two things: uh, planning for 2020 because I wrote a post yesterday in the uh, foundation. You can see the link above there. HTTPS join smo.com forward slash free. Um, it's probably not the type of planning post you expect. Um, it goes addresses various different things, and we also want to talk about Facebook because I am getting more and more frustrated with facebook every freaking day I really am really am it's just do so what we're gonna do is do good the bad and the ugly because tim has had a lot of joy a lot of facebook joy the season I, of joy I, I'm not, I'm not sure. i've had facebook success maybe not joy um because i still have my i uh, pretty much every single day i swear at facebook um, but uh, I've certainly had success with it, and we'll talk about some of the successes I've had with it. Um, yeah. And we'll talk about some of the real shitty stuff and really some of the really, really ugly sh stuff that we've had with Facebook. Yeah. Um, right. And, and also what other people have experienced with Facebook as well. Because um, if you've got any like experiences that you want to share, stick them in the comments. Yeah. Usual thing, get involved. That's what it's all about. Right. So let, let me, let me start off with my most recent uh, encounter with Facebook. So last week, you may remember, I did a flash sale. So I flash. took one of my products, flash, ah, saver of the universe. Um, I did a saver of the universe sale and I set it up on Facebook the day before. So basically what would happen, it would run ads to anybody who'd visited any of my pages in the previous seven days. Anyone who'd written, read any of my emails in the last seven days, the usual type of thing. Right, so anybody was engaged to see an ad. Um, I then set up a retargeting ad for anybody who went to the sales page and didn't buy. Pretty basic marketing. Works like gangbusters normally. People get to see your advert, they check it out, and then they get retargeted. You make loads of sales. So I set it up to go live at 11 o'clock on Friday and finish at 3 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, sorry, Monday. So I'm sitting there Saturday afternoon, I'm thinking, I can't believe I've made no no ads on Facebook, no, no sales on Facebook. I always make sales on Facebook when I do this. So I go and checked it. You see how up to date I am. I took four, 24 hours to check. The ads weren't running. They were still in review. So f finally, about you know, some sort of early Sunday morning, they went live. Well, hey, they didn't bother sending any traffic to the retargeting ad. <laughs> So, so here's here's the antithesis to this, or the, the reason behind what's going on right now. And I hinted at this last week, I think, um, in our call that um, basically Facebook of uh, my Facebook ads rep basically told me that uh, this in, during this quarter and certainly in this month, there are three times as many advertisers and ad campaigns running at this time of year compared to any other time of the year. So. Um, obviously, they've got a review process, a manual review process for a lot of uh, people and a lot of um, ad accounts. So it's going to take three times as long to actually get something like um, approved. So if you do have stuff that is, um, if you do have uh, campaigns that you want to run, um, you've got to think much, much way further ahead. So one of the things that I will do if I know that I want to run a campaign I will set up the the ad and the ad set and the campaign and all that kind of stuff and um, set it as paused. Um, but basically, I will cr create it and it puts that ad straight away into the review process. So it is already ready, approved, ready for when like, I want the ad to go live. 
So you've got to think probably about a week or two in, in advance in a lot of this, in a lot of cases. Yeah. Certainly in this next week, um, you know, at, at the time of recording, it's uh, the 21st, 22nd, 22nd of November. Um, and it's a next, the, a week today is Black Friday. And yeah. a lot of people are already running their Black Friday campaigns because Black Friday is no longer a single day event. It is a month long event, month long event, which is mad, really, when you consider that the biggest uh, and this is the bit which baffles me is like the biggest sales event in the world right now is um, in China. It's called the Singles Day. OK, so Singles Day is I think it was started. Um, it wasn't started by Alibaba, but basically they kind of almost taken ownership of it. But on Alibaba, they made I think it was like they did over a billion billion dollars in the first three seconds of Singles Day. But because they condensed Singles Day into a one day event, or like I think it was one day plus a half a day or something like that. Can't remember the exact thing. But because they condensed it all, it basically kept like the whole thing nice and tight. So ad campaigns only ran on that particular day and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, um it, the whole Black Friday thing has become a bit of a a bit of a monster to say the least and if you're running wanting to run campaigns at this time of year you have to plan well ahead uh, if anything you wanted to have tested your creatives and tested to your messages and got the campaigns already and set up and all the audience and stuff set up a month in advance um, because otherwise it's a you're, you're basically going to be in the same situation mark was where nothing's going to get approved for like days and like that flash sale is no, long, no longer becomes particularly flashy the damp squib sale luckily i know how to use email isn't it yeah, well absolutely oh dear um, so there's there's a whole whole bunch of other there's a whole bunch of good stuff i've basically got written down i've got a couple of good things a couple of bad things and a couple of really ugly things with facebook ads and some of these you you will know about already um, but it's kind of what I want to talk about is ultimately that um, the success of my main business this year has actually come predominantly from Facebook or uh, I say predominantly a large part of the new customer acquisition that we've um, had this year has come pretty much from Facebook, but is part of an overall system that's meant that we have um, we're probably going to double our revenue um, this year for Lean Greens. Um, and off the back of that, basically, it's off the back of some uh, Facebook campaigns that have really worked. Um, and it's, you know, um, we did a, I think we did a live call earlier in the year where I talked about the system and approach to Facebook ads that we that, that I'm running at the moment. And that's pretty much what we've done is we've got a very simple system, simple haha, a very simple system of campaigns to um, kind of build awareness of our brand, um, you know, put an offer in front of them, retarget them, all that kind of stuff. So this stuff works, but it takes an, a certain amount of effort and build up. And if I was starting from zero today, I wouldn't start today. I would start probably, I, I would do the preparation in December ready for January um, to launch campaigns because at the moment, any campaigns that you're going to run, you're going to get crucified and it's going to be some of the worst um uh cost per acquisition and return on ad spends you're going to get all year so um the good parts of facebook is obvious reach um once you have a campaign that's working and you've got an offer that's working and you are coming within budget for your target cost per acquisition or your return on ad spend is on point you can scale to the moon you can scale very very quickly and we saw the bad side of that in this year where we ran out of stock, um, which uh, becomes the next limiting not factor. Not twice, but how many times? Uh, three times we ran out of stock this year. Yeah. Um, and people go, oh, that's a great problem to have. And it's like, no, it's not. Um, believe me, when people want to buy your product, it is the worst thing possible because it, it absolutely crucifies your cash flow as well. When you've got ad campaigns running and we had to turn the ad campaign successful working ad campaigns and offers we had to turn them off and it's the worst feeling in the world not being able to do that because 
you know, as marketers, we spend years trying to find that secret source, that thing that works. And when you find it, you just want to like turn it up to 11. And when you can't, it's the, the, truly one of the most frustrating periods I've ever had. Um, you know, uh, and I've, uh, we've had desperate times where we've made no sales at all. And it's like, it's been awful, but it's even worse when you've got an offer that works, <laughs> you can't do anything with. Um, so yeah, really, really frustrating that part, but the reach, and once you've got a campaign that works, it really can work. So some of the things that you've got with, in terms of reach is things like building an audience on Facebook, building a following on audience is actually very, very cost effective. You know, we can get Facebook likes people to follow us and follow our business and our brand and our profile and all that kind of stuff. It's actually super low cost. We can build an audience very quickly. Now, what you do with that audience is then really important. You've got to move people to the next level. You've got to get them to opt into your email list. So you're, you're not reliant on that audience being on Facebook, but it's a great place to start a relationship because that's where a lot of people are. So if you're, you know, if you're wanting to try and reach somebody who's interested in, interested in Indian basket weaving, there is there is a place for that. You know, you can find people who are interested in Indian basket weaving on Facebook. Otherwise, you're going to have to go old school and figure out forums and all of that kind of nonsense and 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 play the SEO game and all that kind of stuff as well, which is hard hard work with facebook it's actually really really easy to find good audiences and good and create good communities so that part of facebook is really good the facebook ads when they work when you can get them on point in terms of ad costs they're like they you can uh, your world your, is your oyster it's it's like getting to that point is sometimes hard work and uh, right on cue, somebody started uh, cutting trees down in the back garden. <laughs> Sorry, as soon as you looked away, I'd messed like messing around. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's basically that's the good stuff with Facebook. Um, I don't know whether Mark's got any other good stuff to do with Facebook. Uh, let me look at the good the good stuff column. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, w w one thing we were talking about beforehand, right? was and th th this is sort of what really gets me going so tim can't go and advertise supplements on facebook okay there's lots of things you can't advertise on facebook however you can, you can advertise supplements but yeah, you can but you have to do it in a smart way yeah. however here's a loophole for you run it as a political ad <laughs> you can lie like you do a political ad you can lie like hell in it right Lean greens will grow your hair back, right? This is a this is a message from Tim's political party. He could run that all day long. I'll run it as the Greens Party, shall I? Yeah, the Greens Party, rather than the Green Party. Greens. The Z at the end, obviously, because we're trendy. Oh yeah. No, but it, it it's it, it seems that um, Facebook has got one rule for people with lots of money who are willing to throw hundreds of thousands of dollars and aren't worried about how much your ad is costing. And then one rule for everybody else who try to run a business uh, in a most effective and financially responsible way possible. See, here's the thing. I, I, I want to kind of like try and turn this around because otherwise this ends up becoming a bit of a like a um, standing on a soapbox and whinging about Facebook kind of thing, which doesn't, which, which doesn't really help anybody. Um, I, I, whilst I'd love to whinge about Facebook all the time, what I want to kind of present is actually a uh, uh, some of the other stuff that you can do with Facebook. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of tools with Facebook that you can use that get your message out maybe more cost effectively. So things like, say, for example, Facebook Lives. Um, uh, I've seen um, one of our members, uh, Rachel Matthews, she uses yeah. Facebook Lives brilliantly for yeah. her niche. Um, so it's a great place to sort of basically have a platform where you can talk about 
your values, your beliefs, your products, your ideas and stuff like that um, in a very easy manner and, it, and it, with, with a decent amount of reach to it as well. So um, don't ever deny, don't ever think that it's like this is just about, oh, well, it's a bit of a, a bitch and a moan about, about Facebook stuff. There is some really, really great stuff about it. And the, the Facebook Live still believe it is one of the most underutilized um, marketing methods yeah. that we can have. It's there's a reason why this video goes live on Facebook <laughs> and uh, because it, and YouTube <laughs> and YouTube, but it, because it has reach, that's why we want to do it. Um, so some of the bad stuff that we've got, um, other than Mark's whinging about <laughs> stuff, um, ad costs. Um, it ain't cheap, but at the same time, it's cheaper than a whole lot of other platforms that you can go on to. So um, we get approached pretty much every week um, to do run adverts in newspapers and magazines and all that kind of stuff. And um, they come to me and say, oh, you know, rack rate is two and a half thousand pounds for or five thousand pounds for a full page advert in our in our magazine. And if you sign up to five of five of them, then we'll give you a 50 percent discount and all this. I'm like, I'm still looking at it. I'm like, well, I, that's, you're still asking me to spend twenty thousand pounds here, boys. Uh, no, um, because if I spend twenty thousand pounds on Facebook, I can get a return on investment, even if it's an expensive return on investment. I can still get, I can still get customers. I can track it. I can get, I can optimize it very, very quickly. I can change the creative. I can test a hundred creatives very, very quickly on Facebook. Um, one of the things that Mark was uh, pointing me out this week was to do with, um, it was a, an interview with Kurt Marley. Um, if you've never come across Kurt before, he's he rubs me up the wrong way, but I do actually like his well, system. He, he me, 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 I'm amazing. Yes, very however, well okay. Yeah, however. You know, below that, once you, once you like ignore that bit, yeah, so once he dig below his his narcissistic kind of tendencies, um, <laughs> he's he's actually his heart's in the right place. He's got an awful lot of knowledge about and understanding of the Facebook platform. One of the things he was talking about was the whole dynamic creatives, where you basically feed Facebook the Facebook machine like you know half a dozen titles, half a dozen descriptions, a whole bunch of images. And it will basically mix and match and figure out which ones are the right ones to put in front of your audience. You can't do that with uh, a newspaper ad or a, a, a magazine ad. Once you've submitted your creative, that's it. You're screwed for the next six months. And you don't know whether it's going to work or not. You can't, you can't get that direct feedback. Most people who open a magazine, it's like advert, advert, advert. And it's like, you know, the, the, the sort of the cost per thousand of um, for for a, a newspaper or a magazine is is ridiculously expensive in comparison to Facebook. People say that Facebook is expensive is because we're so used as marketers to five years ago or ten years ago the the penny clicks and the the you know the mythical you know penny clicks that really kind of never existed um in my opinion um, you know you might have got penny clicks you still get really cheap clicks. But they were, um, whether, whether they convert or not, that was another question. Exactly, that's the point. So you know, and, and as marketers, we we like you know we're desperate for like the good old days of you know we look back with rose tinted glasses and we complained about like the ad costs back then um, because we couldn't get them to get it we couldn't get it to convert back then. Um, so we're still having to work hard as hard today, but it's like we have to be even better at converting people. Um, you know, especially when your cost per thousands are uh, in the region of eight to ten to fifteen pounds per thousand, you know, impressions, and you know, in, in terms of cost per clicks and all that kind of stuff, it, it it's expensive. But if yeah, you can yeah. convert, you know, one or two or three in a hundred clicks to a sale, as long as you've got the structure right on your own website, the offer structure correctly, and the margins right, then you can actually make it work. One thing, ad costs. Yeah, yeah. One one thing that I, I will I will give them something right. I will be really positive here. I can run an advert between Frank Kern and Russell Brunson. If you're in the fashion market, 
you can run an advert between uh, Dior and Versace. It, Tim, in the supplement business, he can run an advert right next to one of the big supplement com com companies. So it's democratized advertising. Yeah, very much so. Advertising is no longer, for, well, it's the, more, the more money you have, the more you can advertise, but you can still reach the same audience as everybody else. And that is actually a positive. So I will give them that. So the next thing that's on my list of things that is. Hang on, kind hang of, on. We've got oh. a question. Do videos, not Facebook Lives, on a page have more reach than just posts? Not necessarily. The answer to that is yes, definitely. However, if you got, if you have a meme up there uh, and people are sharing it, etc., then that's going to get way more reach than just a video that's not getting shared. So a good video would have more reach, probably, probably than a good post. A I, good I, video would have less reach than an excellent post. See, here's here's the thing. It's like we've we've been running all sorts of different types of posts um, organically um, through our Facebook page, and it's like some images absolutely crush some of some of the videos and then some of the videos crush some of the, the the images we also have things like gallery posts and that's what i was hinted at about five minutes ago is there's so many different ways of posting content whether it's facebook lives facebook videos whether it's static image posts and you've got like the different sizes of those images and different sizes of those videos as well which you can test um to see which ones get the more engagement or lower cost per click or whatever you've got galleries you've got um the carousel things you've got instant facebook instant experience posts you have so many, that one. Uh, I, i've tried them they're shockingly poor um but it, it, the thing is there's there's so many different formats you have to test them all and that's what you know. The job of my um, uh, wonderful assistant Ellie in the office. She does an awful lot of this stuff. Gallery posts, Tamar. I've just seen your thing. Galleries are basically where you upload like more than more than a more than one per image. And you say, for example, you upload ten images um, uh, onto the same post. So one of the posts that has worked really, really well is that we did. A, uh, we've got an article that's to do with, um, uh, I think it's uh, toast. That was what it is. It's like multiple different ways of um, making your toast look awesome or taste awesome and stuff like that. So we had like about half a dozen different like toast toppings, and we posted these amazing photographs that Ellie took of each of the different creations that we had, and we posted those up in one post as a gallery, and that post absolutely crushed it knocked it out of the park with the amount of engagement because people were scrolling through and clicking on each and every single image so oh that looks good oh that looks awesome that looks lovely you know. in so oh you had marmite uh no we had uh boring stuff like you know uh smoked salmon and um uh, and a poached egg Sm yeah smashed every fucking smashed avocado you can smash as many avocados <laughs> Um, but yeah, those that, that's what a gallery um, post is. They do work, um, but they don't always work. If you just exclusively did gallery posts, then it would probably um, completely bomb. We've got some um, posts. Our pr private chat has disappeared um, on my thing for some reason. What you done? I don't know. Private chat on the right hand side doesn't has disappeared on my thing. Sorry, I'll carry on. Um, so basically, like that, you know, you've got to experiment with lots and lots of different posts types that you've got on Facebook. Some of them work really well, some of them don't. There's some of them completely bomb. So, um, what else we got on here? <laughs> yeah, time is one of the bad elements of Facebook ads, um, and Facebook in in total, it's a complete and utter time suck. Um, it's it's god awful. Um, the amount of time that I waste every single day checking up on Facebook ads and checking up on like to see which ones have worked well, which ones have not worked so well, which ones, you know, creating new new campaigns and all that kind of stuff. It takes an awful lot of time. And for me, that's like, you know, time is the one thing I can't get back, you know, and it's it's a, the, one of the most frustrating aspects of 
of of of doing stuff on facebook is it it's it's an enormous amount of time but it's worthwhile if you can get the results so things like i spend an awful lot of time uh responding to comments on facebook so you know stuff like that is it, it always takes it takes a huge amount of time um so yeah there we go vegemite yeah. is made from camel herders flip-flops <laughs> oh that's you yeah <laughs> It's horrible. I love I love Marmite. I hate Vegemite. Um, what was I say? Yeah, another another good technique that I actually got from the same interview that we were talking about with Kurt Marley was that he when he does an event he doesn't bother getting a booth, which is actually the reason I sent it to Tim because you know, things like body power and stuff like that. So Tim could run adverts to just that postcode or in America just that zip code. So only people at that event would see Tim's adverts. And then basically for $20 a day, he's getting pretty more coverage than somebody with a was it a thousand pound or a thousand dollar booth. So he, he here's here's the way that I would I would utilize this. I think they called it what did they call it? The propaganda method, which I thought was a bit aggressive, but um, uh, one of the one of the thoughts of using that was like, well, I don't want to go to all these bloody events. So and I certainly don't want to booth there. But why not just find a list of all of the events that are going on around the country? Um, every weekend, there'll be an event for something. And I basically just infiltrate that particular postcode with my adverts, because I know there will be a, a core of people who are interested in whether it's my brand and my uh, people who follow us. But like, you know, um, people who might not be following us. And it's like, yeah, we can try and we can basically infiltrate all these different events where we know there's going to be a hotbed of our audience at each of those events. And you know, even if it costs like 20 bucks a day or you know, if, you know, even if I spend a hundred bucks per day for each of those events, it's, it's going to be worthwhile because their mindset, whilst the people are at that event, they're going to be looking on their Facebook phone, uh, on the phone on Facebook and um, for stuff because they're walking around an event and they'll be seeing like my adverts related, to, you know, not necessarily directly related to the um, the event they're at, but at least my adverts are popping up. Um, and it is a extremely, extremely targeted uh, um, ad, ad campaign. So certainly something that I'll be looking into a little bit to, to do yeah, that. I mean, when you look at the events that happen, okay, traffic and conversions, probably no, because everyone will be doing it, doing that now. But things like the, the podcast, podcast fest, um, for me, WordPress stuff. So I know Dave's here on his broadband showing it off because you can actually hear us in HD now and see us in HD. Um, can you see the show? Um, I know. I did. Because uh, I, I, knew, I knew that he'd be commenting. But he, I mean, for his business, commenting or running ads to any of the WordPress events, tar targeting them with an advert for his, you know, all his design or his building or his maintenance projects perfect i mean it's it's something that we're gonna have to look really deeply at because yeah. it's it's gonna be even if you don't target the top level if you aim for the, the middle level or lower level events might only be 200 people there but that's 200 people who in, in a location that you know are going to be really interested so so to give you a real example of this the way that it would work for me is Say, for example, I know that there's, say, for example, Body Power. Now, Body Power is one of the biggest fitness events in the UK. Um, I don't want to pay five grand for a booth at Body Power. I don't want to spend um, the extra 15 grand that it would cost me to staff that and actually have a stand and pay for the stand and all the stock to be delivered there and you know all of the other sundry sort of costs um 20 grand for a weekend you could blow that easily and we've done that for like we ran um we've been at things like uh the london bike show a couple of years ago and we spent 20 grand for on a four-day event um which kind of makes me feel slightly sick um inside for the for, for running that campaign for, for going to that event so here's what i would do instead because i have a product so for example for body power if i was going i don't want to go to body power i just put my advert for my protein powder so for everybody who is in the vicinity 
of the London NEC, sorry, the Birmingham NEC um, uh, on the weekend of body power, whilst Mark, like, you know, dies of like a million deaths. Um, uh, whilst, you know, I would basically run, the, uh, run a campaign, an ad campaign that targets people who are in that particular area with a very specific offer for my protein powder and go body power special offer 20% off lean greens whey, uh, trim whey protein isolate go here to get it and I, I it's like I'm not there I'm not at the event but people can still like go oh there's a body power offer I'll get that so and at the very least I can collect leads that's the way I would do it because I know that the people who go to body power are um that they're looking for protein powder that's how i would run it so apply that to your own particular industry so you know um there's people like uh say for example uh anders i don't think he's on today um but it, it's the the uh, you know if he was going to say for example a you know a, a furniture event and he would go uh, okay or if he's if he knows of a big furniture event he just puts his adverts up to people who are attending that particular event why yeah. not uh, you know rachel who's got gardening stuff anything to do with gardening you know gardening shows absolutely um anybody who goes to like the chelsea flower show target them yeah oh that was, that's a good one that is that is you know genuinely probably that's a the, the, that's a ten thousand dollar like tip there right right away um <laughs> so those kind of ways of utilizing facebook that's some of the good stuff um uh, it's when you try and do like the um, the carpet bombing effect on Facebook, um, which to a certain degree can work with a broad audience or with a broad appeal offer. But for uh, for most of us, we don't have broad appeal. We have to target people very specifically. Um, so it, it's it's challenging to try and do that carpet bombing of approach um, to the whole of the Facebook two billion people who are using it. So you know that's where it becomes frustrating but it's got some good elements to it as well yeah i mean even think about that so let's say ryan lee held one of his email one uh, one email a day courses so he holds it in connecticut he holds it in the center of um a town in connecticut i can't remember which one it is um he has about 20 people there so if, if you run an ad for people who like ryan lee who are in this particular zip code you're going to pretty much target the 20 people that are at his course. Same as if, um, what's it, Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn is doing lots of events now. A lot of people go to the events that he's talking at because they like Pat Flynn. There you go, bang. So I, I know you can target him. So you target him and a postcode and a zip code. You've got your probably ideal audience. Yep. So this bit is definitely getting cut out and added to um, a dynamic ad series of dynamic adverts with lots of little video snippets. Let's say, you know, I, if I was to use that that particular strategy, I would be, you know, looking to capture leads as much as I can. But it's I, I'm always I, I have a certain tier of a, a tiered approach to any ads that I run. And a lot of it is I try and make a sale first. Because if I can make a sale first and foremost, it liquidates the cost of running the ad campaign. If they don't, if they don't look like they're going to convert to buy, the next thing I try and do is I try and capture a lead. So exit pops or whatever you want to call them, um, you know, or timed uh, uh, opt-in boxes, you know, certain scroll depth, all that kind of stuff. Try and capture a lead and give them a reason why they want to add themselves to your email list. And then the, if they don't do either of those things, then they go onto a retargeting list, which we then retarget them with other ads, which, you know, to, to ultimately try and get them to convert. Those are the three tiers. Very, very simple. If you look at it from that perspective, so try and make a sale for me. People say, oh, don't try and make a sale straight off the, off the bat. And it's like, well, actually, I do want to try and make a sale because the kind of offers that I'm putting out there, they're very much about trying to get people to buy straight away. Um, it's not something that you need to think about too much unless you've got a two thousand or a five thousand dollar offer for something. That's where it might be capture the lead first. But ultimately, try and make the sale. 
if they don't make the sale, get them to opt in. If they don't opt in, put them into a retargeting list, put them into a retargeting list anyway. But ultimately, those are your three different options. Yeah. Right. We need to go quickly back over dynamic adverts. Mm. So dynamic adverts, for, in my, in my, from my point of view, is I tend to run retargeting ads as dyna- dynamic adverts. So I will put a load of testimonials up there and three or four different headlines, three or four bits of body, four or five maybe testimonials, and then let Facebook build out, out the adverts from the headlines, the bodies, and the images. And Facebook will find the best advert for the right people. That sounds up, doesn't it, Tim? Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I can actually display this without like, um, Wait, without the secrets. With, well, no, it's not, not. It's not necessarily giving away any secrets. I'm, you, you know me. I'm as transparent as anybody. But I'll, I'll show. I'll show you my stuff. Oh, I'll just say translucent. translucent. You really need to get out more. Yeah, I know. Living, it's living in Scotland. Um, give me a second. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to share my screen because this probably more make it slightly easier Hold on a second where's facebook uh well, blah, 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 blah. share screen share screen uh yeah that one will do uh, share okay it's just gonna go yeah at the stream give me a second okay so when you're creating an ad in facebook you get um, all of these options for creating an ad, whether it's uh, carousel, collections, which is for product stuff, or single image or single videos. So if you select single image or video, if you scroll down, you've got these options now where you can go, okay, the primary text, I can add multiple options for the primary text. Okay, so we've also got the option for multiple uh, headlines if I can add, so I can add in multiple headlines. I can have multiple descriptions. Okay, so you've got lots and lots of different options of that. Okay, so you can also add multiple images to this as well. So like when you go to add media, add image, so you can put multiple images onto that. What it will do is when you give Facebook all of this, what it does is it will basically show the right headline and the right text and the right image to the person who's viewing that particular ad at that particular moment. So that's basically what dynamic creation, dynamic ad creatives are. Um, It's a fairly new thing in Facebook. It's probably been there for me about a month, maybe two months now. Um, So you may not have it yet, but I believe that most people have it. I've not come across anybody who doesn't. But basically, it will it'll uh, create, um, it, it will test out all the different options. You just let Facebook's machine learning figure out which one's the best image, the best text. The thing is, is not, you're not like, um, it's not creating split tests of the different images or the different texts or the different headlines. What it's doing is it's creating, um, it's basically giving Facebook options of what to show to the right, per, uh, what, is the right thing to show to the right person at the right time. That's the important bit. So you're not like going through and going, okay, well, that particular headline doesn't work, so I'm gonna delete that. And that one's never got, it doesn't get any conversions on that particular primary text, I'm gonna delete that. You just leave them up there. Facebook's machine learning will figure that all out. So that's basically dynamic ad creatives. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, just answer a question here, but you can answer it as well. There you go. How many ads would it create? So technically, it's only creating one ad, but lots of versions of that one ad. Yes. I'm just looking at Ian's question. Are you breaking Facebook rules by showing people a working as ad? A working so you don't ad. Need to waste a- we don't need to waste a fortune working it out. <laughs> you lost your bronze, bronze badge for confusing Tim again. Yeah. <laughs> it's my confused look again. Um, <laughs> so hopefully that makes more sense. It's basically like it's a it's a way of just creating like multiple um, versions of the same creative. 
uh, yeah, it's still technically only one ad, but what it's doing is like you're just letting Facebook's machine learning figure out what's the right thing to show. And this is another this is a, another good thing with Facebook ads. And I'm, I'm we were expecting to be dissing Facebook all the way through. Facebook's constantly evolving. It's probably one of the most sophisticated, one of the most powerful ad platforms on the planet. Um, Google Ads is it, it's kind of almost playing a game of catch up at the moment with a lot of the stuff that they're doing, which is not a bad thing because Google is a great alternative. It's just that people, and we've been saying this for blooming years, Google is like um, is a should be where people are spending as much time as they are on their Facebook ads as they are the Google ads. I'm spending just as much time in the Google ad platform as I am in my Facebook ads platform. I'm trying to work out like to get YouTube ads to work. And we've been trying, I've been trying for ages to get bloody YouTube ads to work. I'm getting there. I'm seeing some signs of some results. It's just a bit, it's, it's just a bit very different mindset and a very different type of platform to what Facebook is like. Um, so, you know, for me, it's about one of the slow, the reasons why it's slow creating YouTube ads is it's slower creating creatives like yeah. YouTube video creators because you have to do a very different type of creative than what you would do on Facebook. So it slows the process of me bu building new campaigns. Um, yeah, but the, I think the problem with Google ads for our gen us generation of marketers is we still remember what happened five years ago when they didn't have any competition. And literally you could, you would struggle to get your ad approved. At, at the moment, my my Google my Google Ads rep, she's she's desperate like for me to run as much stuff as possible. I'm basically going, whoa, 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 slow down. I've got I, I I've got a plan. I just need to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And like, and I was like, I said to her, I think I said to her the last discussion I had with her I was like, I want to make sure that all of my ads and all of my landing pages are okay to run on google i don't want to lose my google ads account and she was like don't worry about it if you're running ads on facebook you're you're basically covered when we're, we're no more stringent than facebook so if you're being successful with landing pages on facebook then they should work quite happily on google now there's some like minor sort of like differences with with google but most of the time it's like they, they, they actually don't care. They want you to spend money on Google because they know that they're losing the game to Facebook. So they're just being a whole lot more lenient. Um, they're not being as they're not being dicks like they were five years ago when they were basically slapping accounts left, right and center and closing people down and saying, well, you're not allowed so to. Come the only game in town. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before I forget, I'm going to cheer everybody up. Everybody listen to this. I'm going to cheer you up. The chief financial officer of PayPal has had had his bank account closed down with no reason or he claims his bank account was closed down for no reason by bank of america thank you bank of america give them some of their own medicine <laughs> so so tomorrow's just put a question uh, comment about google ads used to be very effective and not that expensive that's very true but they're expensive today i would counter that i would suggest that they are the same price if not cheaper than than uh, facebook if set up correctly and it's, it's the same for like Facebook. It, Facebook's expensive when the targeting's not right, or the creative's not right, or you know you 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 just don't you haven't got the thing set up correctly. And it's like you know I, we started off by explaining um, how expensive Facebook ads are. They are ridiculously expensive. I would say suggest you know for me personally, Facebook ads are probably about two times the cost on cost per thousands. So, you know, the reach costs me twice as much on Facebook as it does on a, on a Google ad. Um, on, on YouTube, the, the cost is insanely cheap. To get somebody to watch a video on YouTube, so a view through, a, a, a view on YouTube is normally around about eight, nine cents, cents for, per view. Now, a view for, for um, YouTube is, I think is 10 seconds. I think that's the way they work it out. Uh, a view on Facebook is three seconds. Now, a view on Facebook is costing me something like 20, 25 pence per view. 
whereas on on youtube it's about nine pence a view so and uh, arguably on youtube you have their attention at the very least for the, that three uh, sorry that five seconds that first five seconds before they skip the ad and if they watch the ad for the 10 seconds or more then it's a better engagement because they've not skipped the ad and they're actually interested in what you're what you've got whereas the three second view on facebook people just can scroll past people still want to watch the video that they want to watch on youtube so i i would say <laughs> yeah i've just seen a comment from tamar so uh, you know the ultimately the i do believe it's cheaper um we will do a youtube ads course at some point the challenge yeah, well, is, is like i, I want to make it work first. first yeah, yeah we've I, got to get it working and yeah. i'm not satisfied with um the testing i've done so it we will definitely do one but only when when we got it working properly yeah i i it's, it's like facebook you know there's facebook stuff that we've ever done like we only report on stuff and actually start creating like uh you know when we did things like um the uh ministry of engagement um that was because it was working at the yeah. at that time and it's to a certain degree it still works um the facebook stuff that we spoke about earlier in the year which was video number 36 or whatever it was um was because that was what that's what's working and it is still working for me to a certain degree so i, I don't want to start showing you some youtube stuff of how to do youtube ads when we haven't actually got any campaigns that are actually being profitable or at the very least break even um so once we get to that point then we'll start doing a course for it. I know. Sorry, sorry, Tamar. Um, Annie, you said video, video. Yeah. If you're not doing video, even Wave video, Animoto video, uh, Splashio, I mean, the other one's called Promo that JB mentioned yesterday. Um, you've got to do a video. You don't. You don't have to be in front of the camera. No. It's like the Well, there's that app that you pointed me at, Mark. I'm a headliner. Um, headliner. Yeah, which you can uh, headliner is uh, an app that basically you can um, you can basically give it a a, a, a blog URL and it will create yeah. a video based upon the your, the, the, the the blog post. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lumen, Lumen Five. Lumen Five is another one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so there's 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 plenty out there which make the creation part a lot easier. A lot of these tend not to work quite so well on YouTube um youtube ads as they would do on facebook facebook you can create like a lumen 5 or you can create a uh you know a headliner thing and it'll work quite well as an ad whereas on on youtube they won't work quite as well um okay. so. I've talked to Uncle Pete this week and he's using v-roll he's having a lot of success with some v-roll adverts that he's testing at the moment yeah so, lots of different lots of different platforms out there for doing video stuff so yeah. um, really, um, I, you know, some of the ugly stuff I've got written down, we've talked about like Facebook bans. Basically, yeah. if you ever get banned from Facebook, it's your own fucking fault. Honestly, sorry to bitch and like swear. But the amount of people I see go, Facebook's like slap me, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's because you broke the, their terms of service. Understand their terms of service and like, stay well within the boundaries of them don't butt up defense you can never find out what terms of service you broke no they are absolutely terrible with yeah, that. that part is terrible but at the same time it's like if you understand the terms of service in the first place if you understand what are the rules about what you can and can't say and there's plenty of documentation on that stuff understand it and stay well within the boundaries don't do like before and afters images, for example, because that's just dumb. And it's like, don't put that stuff on your blooming landing page either, because that's yeah, just I, dumb. This, this is before and after, Tim rubbing lean greens into his hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe they'll take this video as a before and an after. Um, <laughs> um, the only other ugly thing with Facebook is inconsistent results. And like, this is the my biggest frustration with Facebook, I would say, on a day day by day basis. If I look at my ad, ads for this month, um, I was looking at one of the campaigns and it was running about 30 pounds per conversion. 
And I was just like, that's awful. That's like probably about five to 10 pounds more than I want to spend. However, if I look at it uh, on the whole, if I look at the retargeting campaigns to draw new customers back into us, like, you know, so I've got top of funnel and middle of funnel, like ultimately if I bring those together, then it works out around about 15 pounds of conversion, which I'm quite happy with, especially in November. So you can't, and, and the thing is, is like some, this day is like, I think it was Monday or Tuesday this week, we had like one conversion. And then yesterday morning, we had five conversions before I'd even woken up. And I'm like, going, you know, you're desperate. Like you think that you get, it's, it's dead and it's like, you know, one conversion on a particular day and you go, oh, I'm just going to turn this shit off. You just have to sit on your hands and it drives you insane because you know you're spending money, but it's like you don't know whether it's kind of broken forever or if it's going to suddenly spring into life again. And the thing is, I always tend to look at things over at least a two-week period, 14 days. I'll look at results over a two-week period because in the microcosm of like a single day, it's it's going to look ugly or it's going to look freaking awesome. And it's like it's never going to be consistent from day to day. Look at it over 14 days. Look at it across the whole life cycle of the customer acquisition from your cold campaign, your awareness campaigns, through to like the retargeting campaigns and how well they convert. And if you can look at it from that perspective, that's when you you won't lose your mind quite so much. And <laughs> you you won't get so frustrated by the inconsistency. Sure. So. In the end, our good, the bad, and the ugly turned into a bit of a love-in, didn't it? Yes and no. I think there's, the, and we, we've expressed the common sort of bads and uglies that people have with Facebook. But ultimately, it's like, it's here to stay. You can't, we could all just throw our hands up and just go, oh, fuck it, I hate Facebook, and I'm never going to use it ever again, and all this kind of stuff, which is kind of mark most days of the week. But at the other end of the spectrum, there's a reason why we use Facebook Lives, there's a reason why we still run Facebook ads and it's because of uh, things like the reach and like when it works, it really, really does work. So we can't dismiss Facebook whilst we'd love to. I'd love to like go piss off um, to Facebook and just use Google. At the same time, I'm looking at the two in, in sync because I go, okay, well, Facebook like doing a lot of the brand awareness and then people are then searching on Google and finding our stuff, our Google ads on Google or on YouTube or whatever the retargeting uh, video ads we've got on YouTube. And it works. The combination of all of them works. So you can't, unfortunately, you can't dismiss it um, as much as we'd love to not have to pay Mr. Mark all of that money. Um, do you Mark, Mark, Mark Z or Mark Z. Mark Z. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, Alex Becker. God dear, Alex Becker. Fuck's sake. Um, Alex Becker goes on about that too and has a new tracking platform in beta. Um, yes, the um, tracking platforms. Uh, the, the tracking is going to continue to become more of an interesting game over the next 12 months, I reckon, certainly with, um, you know, certain uh, browsers basically you know, doing away with all of this cookie stuff, which is a bit of a pain in the bum for things like um, uh, affiliate marketers and stuff like that. And also for tracking on for Facebook and stuff like that. Some of, some of the browsers have now turned off the tracking of like the Facebook pixel, which, you know, if you use Firefox, then you're a weirdo anyway, but hey, uh, <laughs> it's a, you know, tracking's a, 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 a fact of life in my opinion, it's going to happen in one way or the other. Most people aren't using browsers on Facebook anyway. Um, a lot of the time, the you know, the even though you're being pinged from the Facebook app to uh, to a a browser, it's generally a Facebook browser that you're going to rather than rather than like you know, uh, face, uh, Firefox or whatever thing you've got on your phone. So. Um, it's interesting that and I think this, the technology behind tracking is going to get better and better, but it's going to be devolved very much to the big players, to the to the Facebooks and the you know the uh, the Googles who will basically control the tr control the market. Um, so yeah, so whilst 
I get what Alex Beck is trying to do with his new platform, tracking platform. I think it's, um, uh, I think it might be uh, out of out of date before it goes live. Anyway, what um, you should mention is before we go, um, advanced matching within Facebook. If you've got your ad account, go in there and turn on advanced matching because that allows Facebook to track people much better and know exactly who you are sh they're showing the ads to, who is more more likely to click on the ads. Um, and it will enhance the performance of the AI. Power five is the thing to look for. It's not my thing. It's not Mark's thing. It's 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 Mark Zed's thing. Um, Mark Zuckerberg's power five. Um, go read about it. Go do a search for it and follow the instructions of actually how to um, get the best out of the power five because it works. It's important. It's all about you know, um, about track, this advanced tracking. It's about how to like get your um, audiences uploaded and dynamically updated and all that kind of stuff. So really, really important that you go through the Power 5. It'll explain things like CBO to a certain degree. It'll also explain the dynamic ads that um, uh, Tamar's asking about and what we've just shown you. Do dynamic ads work better? Um, the answer to that it's is- very yeah. In theory, yes, it sh they should work better. Um, what we find is that we get inconsistent results, as we always do. Um, it's kind of like if you look at it on a microcosm, then yes, it's like on a day to day basis, they might not work particularly well. But over the long term, you know, over a period of two weeks, you may find that the dynamic ads work way better than you trying to force Facebook to show this one particular creative and this one particular ad because you like it. Um, that, and and that, that's one of the great things with machine learning versus us learning is that machine learning arguably should do right. things a whole lot better. Yeah. Cool. I think Sorry, we, didn't get, we didn't get under planning. So I think next week might be a good planning one, mate. Yeah, I think so because um, it's getting, getting to that time of year where December is a, a month where we start to sort of get to the point where we sort of switch off from what's been going on this year and think about, okay, what are we going to try and achieve next year? And it's December is a good time to do it unless you've got a particular product that you sell an awful lot of at Christmas and you're yeah. busy kind of thing. For me, it's like the, the planning for next year has already started. I already, already know to a point what products that I want to have created. I already know what campaigns and what platforms I want to be on. Um, you know, so it's it's kind of like you know, the planning is already going on to sort of you know develop the business. So that's that's the idea of what's launching when next year. So right, um, that's it for the week. Thanks for joining us, guys. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, yeah. See you next week, which is my 35th wedding anniversary. Actually, no, the Sunday is. And 35, 35, 30, I got sticking power, mate. And also, it's Black Friday next, next I know. Friday. We might actually feature some of the best and worst Black Friday adverts. We, we, if we, we feel we, like it. We, we could do, uh, uh, we could um, do, do, we could sell something. No, nah, everyone else will be doing that. We, so, don't, we don't do that. It's a matter of principle not to do Black Friday sales. So we're, we're selling something. Not my flower pots, but join SMO free. Join SMO dot much free. Yeah, we're selling it for free. So join the foundation. Read the planning thing I wrote yesterday. I spent ages right doing that. My wedding wedding anniversary. I could do thirty five percent off everything because my wedding thirty fifth wedding anniversary. Actually, that's a really good tip there. If you go to sales site, have a hook. Yeah. So for one day next Sunday, I could I could do thirty five percent off everything. Just see well, it's Mars it's it's Mars comment is like, yeah, I'm surprised Alison hasn't murdered Mark yet either. At least you mean I means I would have got less for murder. You, you get less for double murder as well. Yeah. Right, anyway. Have a great one, guys. Bye. See you later.